Hi everybody, this is Everyday Commentary and this is another video overview and today the knife I'm oh, going to do an overview of is this knife um, and it is the uh, Spyderco Dragonfly 2 in uh, Nishijin carbon fiber um, and so uh, I've already done a review of the Dragonfly 1 and the Dragonfly 2 in ZDP 189 so I didn't feel like it was warranted another review just for the change of material in the handle scales but um, just to give you a brief look at what the knife is it is a small um, pocket folder uh, it is under two and a half inches in the blade length the steel let's see if you can see that the steel is uh, one, uh, ZDP 189, um, this is produced in Japan, and uh, the big deal is that this is a carbon fiber handle. There is another carbon fiber handle, Dragonfly, that was released in the mid to late 90s, but other than that, and that was a, um, I guess, it, it's technically the first generation of the Dragonfly, but in the first generation they moved the thumb hole um, so originally the thumb hole did not follow the 1.1 inch rule for spider coast the, the pivot to the thumb hole has to be 1.1 inches so that the knife was much thinner in profile it wasn't quite as wide but it wasn't as easy to open and so still within the first generation of the the dragonfly meaning before the jimping they changed the profile of the knife so that it would allow for easier opening and it was that thinner version that got the uh, carbon fiber treatment. And since then, it's been almost a decade, well, more than a decade since the, the Dragonfly had a carbon fiber edition. I got this from Howl's Knife Shop when I saw that they were on sale. I bought it immediately. It's my favorite knife, and so I thought I had to have it. Um, it's, it's a good knife. I mean, it's not as light as the ZDP 189, the British Racing Green FRN handle. And I'd probably prefer that knife to this knife. But this knife is a really good looking knife. It's a fun knife to carry. It cuts like a mother because the, the blade is so thin. The grind, and, the, and the, you can see it there, the grind on the actual cutting bevel is really, 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 really thin. I mean, Spartaco did a great job sharpening. I mean, this knife just cuts and cuts and cuts. The steel is good, and the steel means that you can put this thing at a much sharper angle, a much steeper angle than you would be able to do otherwise because the steel is so hard. And it's commonly uh, hardened to Rockwell, like 66 HRC, so it's pretty tough. It doesn't include uh, the wire clip, which is another reason why I prefer the British Racing Green version in addition to the weight. And the wire clip was not possible because the way that they mill the handle to incorporate the wire clip, they do two long slots where the, the, the back part of the clip kind of hooks into the, the material. And then there's a screw that holds those two two little hooks in place. Um, and my understanding was that the Nishijin carbon fiber was really, really fragile and that they couldn't get a slot that wide to be cut cleanly without splitting the carbon fiber. And so what they did was they um, just tapped it for the regular uh, spoon style clip. And you can, you can tell that this is a spoon style clip that's a little shorter. Um, some of the very first versions of this, there was a numbered edition of this sprint run and they did not include the shortened um, spoon style clip. So you'll see some that have a clip that like ends right here instead of this one where it ends right here. Uh, and those are um, those are probably more sought after than this though. I don't really care about the collector's aspect of a knife because I usually use my knives. Um, and you can see there that the H, this part of the back of the knife where the, black, um, the blade and the handle scales and the liners meet up, it's pretty good. It's not quite as good as like the um, back portion of my Almar uh, Ultralight Hawk, but it's pretty good. And you can see here that the lockup is nice and clean and smooth. There's no blade play in any direction. Um, it's a very well-made knife. I do have one point of, of criticism, and it is this, uh, the lanyard hole is, it, I just don't like the way it looks. It's not as clean as it should be. Um, and the little piping, and you can see there's just a tiny bit of the piping sticking out. And I don't like that. And I, I don't think there's anything you can do about it. I think if you fidget with it, you'll probably just rip up the carbon fiber. So it's going to stay as it is. Um, the big issue is that this knife weighs, uh, you know, right around two ounces, whereas the other carbon, or whereas the other 
Dragonfly, the one without the liners, weighs like 1.1, 1.2 ounces. And while I like the shiny, you know, pretty carbon fiber, I'd much rather have a lighter knife. Um, this is essentially a gentleman's knife at this point because it lacks the, uh, or it has extra weight that you don't really need. The other one was like a perfect EDC utility knife. Uh, I'll probably get that knife again someday because I like this knife, but I like that knife better. Um, this is already sold out everywhere, so this is probably uh, going to be something of a collector's item, and maybe one day I'll just you know, sell it or give it away or something. Because I really like the uh, the FRN handle version better, but you know it still is a great little knife. It can do everything that its its lighter brother can do. It's just I'm not sure if I like the extra fancy. Uh, the other thing that is interesting is that even though they went with carbon fiber. They went with Torx bits, so it's not a pinned handle construction, which I know a lot of people don't like. I've never taken my knife apart like that, but it's always nice to have options. Um, and so that's the knife. Uh, it is a really good little uh, gentleman's knife. It's if you like dragonflies, if you're a collector of dragonflies, you got to have this knife. I mean, it's just it. It's so much different than any of the other knives in the dragonfly series, and it really does look nice. I know that uh, some people don't like the Nishijin carbon fiber, but I really do. I think it looks good. It's nice and smooth. You can see there. It's really, really smooth. But the, the great thing about the Dragonfly design is that your hand just gets locked in place. I mean, the shape of the knife is perfect. They didn't do anything to screw up the profile of the knife. So, uh, Other than the added weight, I think this is probably, uh, it would probably be my second favorite Dragonfly because it has the nice steel and has the jimping and all that stuff. Um, and the weight really comes from, from one place because the, the carbon fiber, the Nishijin carbon fiber is relatively light. It's right here. And essentially what they did was they took the G10 uh, Dragonfly and they just put carbon fiber on it instead of the G10 because it has liners. Um, and the big trick with the Dragonfly has always been that it had no liners and I don't think the liners were necessary. Um, maybe they were necessary here because they couldn't get the carbon fiber to be stable enough. But whatever it is, the liners are the problem in terms of the weight. And uh, this is a knife that's probably best linerless. So uh, it's not a terrible knife by any means. It's just when you take the one thing that makes the knife awesome or better than its competition and you add it and you, you know, get rid of it by adding liners, it's like, meh. Oh, well. Um, it's a good little knife. It looks good. It carries well. It cuts like a laser. So there's not much to c complain about except for the fact that it's not the FRN version. Uh, I hope this has been informative. And if you like, uh, if you're looking for a gentleman's folder, this is a great pick. I mean, I was looking for a utility folder in the Dragonfly, and I just got obsessed with the idea that this was a carbon fiber version. And I probably shouldn't have done that, but oh well.